Hi guys, this is Kyle from Alpha Beta IR Analytics and in this video I want to talk about the investment horizon and more specifically in the case when you're using active investment. This video will be structured as follows. First, I'll give you a formal definition on what exactly is the investment horizon. Then, my colleague Pomen will explain what is the information coefficient, which is a tool that we're going to need to measure your forecasting ability in the investment horizon. And finally, I will give you some ideas on how you can find your optimal investment horizon. So, let's start. To understand better the investment horizon, let's first talk about the investment process itself. When you invest, you usually start with a pile of cash that you invest into some site, some kind of a portfolio of securities. And at some point, you sell these securities and turn back to cash, hopefully getting a bigger pile of cash, depending on the success of your investments. The period between the initial investment and the cashing out is also known as the investment horizon. The formal definition is that this is the term used to describe the total length of time that an investor expects to hold a security or a portfolio. This is a traditional understanding of investment. If you are applying the tools of active portfolio management, then you are trying to select the best assets in order to outperform the market. In this case, you also start with a cash and then you put it into portfolio where you select the best assets according to some information. However, the, difference, the differences arise when the new information comes out and changes your understanding of which are the top assets in the investment universe. Then you have to rebalance your portfolio and invest in the best assets according to this new information. The process ends again when you cash out your investments and turn into a cash. In this case, the investment horizon is the period between the initial investment and the need to rebalance the portfolio according to the new information. Again, the formal definition is that this is the period of holding the active portfolio before introducing new information. Obviously, the length of the investment horizon will depend on the quality of your forecasts. If your forecasts are able to predict the residual returns for a longer period of time, then perhaps you could use a longer investment horizon. To get deeper into this, we need a tool that will tell us how good are your forecasting skills. This tool is the information coefficient. Now, I will let Pomen explain what is the information coefficient and how to estimate it. Thanks, Carl. Hi, everybody. Plumin is here. What is information coefficient? Let me explain. To apply active investing, you must have some information. This information gives you some idea what will be the future alpha of assets on the market. The information could be from different sources. It could be based on the fundamental analysis. It could be some technical analysis on the market. It could be some recommendations or advices from your investment consultant or financial analysis. It even could be just your opinion, your feelings, your unexplainable expectations about the assets. You see how diverse and democratic is active management. It can involve in decision-making process even your feelings. Anyway, whatever information you get for your investment can be applied. So, let's assume that now, in moment T0, you have some information. Based on this information, you establish your forecast about the future alpha. What are these forecasts for? Of course, they are about what you expect to happen with the assets in the future period. These are your expectations about future alpha at the moment T1 for all assets. So now in the moment T0, you have established alphas for T1. Of course, reality is always more complicated. When you are in period T1, you get realized alpha or as we call residual return. And some difference will be appear. The difference between what you expected to get in moment T0 here and what you really get in moment T1 here. If you guys are good in math, you would understand that actually we have two columns of data and we can easily calculate covariance by this way. This minus average multiplied by this minus average plus 
this minus average multiplied by this minus average and so on divided n minus one because the values of covariance are hard to be interpreted in the real life for better understanding we can transform covariance into correlation applying this formula here in fact it is exactly our ic information coefficient information coefficient is correlation between forecasted alpha and realized residual return as every correlation, IC can be between minus 1 and plus 1. If your forecast was correct for every asset, that means that your forecast skill were so perfect that you forecasted totally correct which assets will be winners and which assets losers, then your IC will be plus 1. On the contrary, if market moved the assets into totally opposite direction than you expected, then IC of your strategy will be minus 1. If you randomly prepare your forecast, that means that you don't have any forecasting skills, then the IC will be zero. In real life, as many studies say, good managers have IC about 0 0.15, 0 0.20. Because sometimes it is difficult for individual investors to work with IC, we can give one simple subproduct of IC success ratio. By converting IC into success ratio, we can find the proportion of your forecast which was correct or successful. Now it seems more comprehensible. Let me show this table. Here we compare the values of IC and success ratio. For example, if your forecasting skills are perfect, that means the real return are exactly as you forecasted for alpha, then your IC is 1. This means that success ratio is 1. 100% 1 of your forecasts are realized. If you don't have any information and form your expectation randomly, your IC will be 0 and your success ratio 0.5. 50% of your forecasts are correct. If you are exactly opposite to the reality, IC will be minus 1 and your success is 0. You never been correct in forecasting. As I said, normal values of IC for investors are between 0.15 and 0.20. This corresponds with success ratio about 0.60. Now, back to my colleague Carl for more deep insights about the main topic, investment horizon. Thank you, Paulman. Now, let's continue our discussion on the investment horizon. Basically, what he explained is that the information coefficient is the correlation between the initial forecast at the starting of the period, let's say January 1st, and the subsequent return in the period, let's say January 31st. Now I'm going to ask the question, what about the returns in the second period? In this case, the February returns. If we measure the correlation between our initial forecast and the returns in the second period, then we're going to have our or lacked IC. The lacked IC shows the relationship between the forecast and the return vector on some later period and we call it lacked because the factor is lacked an n number of times in relation to the returns. By definition the lacked IC is decreasing when we are adding more lags because the information that we used in the initial forecasting is having less and less effect on the stock returns. This is also called IC decaying. However, the rate at which the IC is decaying differs across factors. Typically, the fundamental factors use their explanatory power in 6 or 9 months from the initial forecast. We define the investment horizon as the period between the initial forecast and the need to rebalance the portfolio according to some new information. So how to find the explanatory power of our initial forecast inside this investment horizon? What we have to do is to first accumulate the returns in the investment horizon, in, in this case in the two periods, and then find the correlation between our initial forecast and this accumulated return. This is also known as horizon IC. Basically the horizon IC help us to find how good our forecasting skills inside our chosen investment horizon. Next, we need to find the relationship between the lacked IC and its decaying factor and also the horizon IC because using this relationship we can find our optimal investment horizon for our portfolio. The mathematical representation of the two indicators is as follows. 
The elect I see is the correlation between the initial forecast and the returns at some later period, where n is the number of lag or the order of the subsequent period, and the horizon I see is the correlation between the forecast and the accumulated return inside these n number of periods. A paper by Chin, Hua and Sorensen in 2004 showed the relationship between the horizon IC and the lacta IC under some assumptions. According to this equation, the horizon IC will increase as we lengthen our investment horizon or increase the lags in the lacked IC. Although the lacked IC is decreasing, the accumulation of positive information will drive the success ratio up. However, this will stop when the decay in the elect IC becomes so rapidly that the increase in lags cannot compensate. This is very important when managing active portfolios because it tells us that the investment horizon should be exactly equal to the lag where the horizon IC starts to diminish. So to find your optimal investment horizon, you have to test your factor find its lagged IC, the horizon IC, and, and check after how many periods the horizon IC starts to decay as well. This relationship between the horizon IC and the length of the investment horizon has another beneficial implication. And this is the turnover and the transaction cost, because if we lengthen our investment horizon, then we are minimizing our transaction cost since it is not required to trade very often. In the end, let's summarize. In this video, we worked three things. First are the formal definitions of the investment horizon. Second, what is the information coefficient and how it behaves throughout the investment horizon. And third, that there is an optimal investment horizon depending on the forecasting factor that you use. Thank you for watching Alpha Beta Iron Analytics. If you like this video, please share it and find us on social media. This was Cal. See you next time.